Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm here with the wonderful Josefa and John, um, one of the artists in Through the Mesh at Neem uh, in 2021 and 2022. Um, I'm really excited. We're really excited to be showing work from Josefa, Tableau Ciel, Phase Contraterre. Um, which is a fabulous uh, part, uh, which is a fabulous film that combines elements of 3D animation with storytelling um, and uh, old fashioned filming to tell different stories about power um, and cultural narratives across time, space, and through different networks. Um, Josef, I was wondering if you could start off by just telling us a little bit um, about the piece and where it's coming from. Uh, so this piece, um, in fact, I wrote the text, the, the poetry manifest text, uh, before I um, I did the video. So um, the first step of this um, of this piece was really writing something uh, manifest for a performance. In fact, it was text for a performance, and um, also after that, I was like, okay, I really want to put some picture on this text because you have a lot of uh, of picture and analogy and. Um, um, mythologic um, references and uh, also a lot of political references in this text. So um, I was wondering how can I do that uh, with the picture I already uh, do, photo montage, also video collage, uh, this kind of different um, medium. So I started to make this video and um, so the, the picture and the, um, the, the reference uh, of the, the ocean and the sea uh, is really um, um, strong in, in, this, in this text and also in the video. So um, everything started with uh, this 3D picture of um, an ocean moving on the black screen. And I really love, really love the idea of um, a notion on the, on, on, the, on the screen, uh, not the real ocean, not the real one, and what we can say uh, about this numerical ocean, this numerical water, and what's, what, what I want to, to, link, uh, to link to. So yes, this is the beginning of, the, of this project. The, the title of the piece translated to English is Painting Sky, Face Against the Ground, uh, which is so beautiful. And I'm wondering if you could explain a little bit about this metaphor of face against the ground um, and how, you know, you have integrated this piece with images, uh, I understand, of Mount Cameroon um, yeah. and, you know, how this all came together and how it relates to, to the title of the piece. Uh, Tableau ciel face contre terre. I really love the the link between uh, the sky, the ocean, also the soil, the ground. Um, you have a lot of analogy uh, between between that. Uh, in fact, um, the stars in the sky um, are constituted with a bit of calcare. This the calcium. This is the same that we have in our bones, but we are living uh, on Earth. And also, you have a lot of um, translation from agua to mushroom. And uh, when you see a, a lichen in the forest, in fact, this is just an agua uh, who can now live um, on the forest and live on the ground. So I think there is a lot of analogy between the sky and also the, the ground, the earth, and a lot of different uh, um, um, world that we, we can see and sometimes we can't really see. And um, you, you know, you have a lot of um, uh, traditional and uh, mythology in Cameroon uh, linked to to the sky, but also uh, linked to to the ground. And in fact, it was really important for me to have this manifest text um, in picture and picturing also with a really old archive uh, movie from colonial uh, history. And it was really interesting to use this, this, um, those picture and put another uh, text on those pictures. So you have a totally different uh, life uh, now for uh, this, um, this movie. So this is a kind of uh, a subtitle, but not a subtitle, maybe a translation of a uh, really old colonial archive that we have and we still have, and we continue to see this kind of uh, colonial archive. It could be movie or so photography, but we need to use this archive and in a different way. And for me, it was maybe a way to use this uh, colonial archive I, I have. And the patchwork is really funny, not really, it's not funny, but, in fact, this is, <laughs> I really love the, the patchwork 
with, uh, with the statue in the middle of the movie. And um, also the statue is in, is in the frame, in the YouTube frame. And what does it mean to have a Cameroon uh, statue in a YouTube frame from it? It's really linked to my work and how tradition and also mythology uh, move uh, from the past to uh, our time, actually. And I think we have a lot of internet mythology now in the when we, we live and when we are, we are also speaking. And then I think it's a link like this uh, in the science movie. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's there's so much to talk about. And I think that, you know, what's really interesting is the way that you are looking at the archive and working to repurpose it in ways that fight against the colonial legacy that those archives continue to perpetuate. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, how, you know, how in this, in this day and age when the world is, uh, when borders are, you know, expanding and contrasting and networks are constantly changing shape, but, you know, instilling certain structures of, of power that remain from the past. What can we do to rethink some of those structures? And are there any tools uh, that we can employ to try to re reshape the, the network? I think um, creativity, but also science fiction and poetry and the, inter the internet are um, huge tools for uh, for this issue uh, in fact when i um, i made this um, this performance so i wrote this text about um, an hydraulic engineer and a uh, grill um, but this engineer discovered like uh, a planet of water but if you want to go in this planet uh, of water you have to change your your shapes um, of human being but you have to change your 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 shape in a drop um, maybe uh, in the sea or ocean, but you have to become water. You have to be water to go in this um, in this planet. And for me, this this principle of um, infiltration, but also uh, our bodies in shapes of water. For me, it was maybe the answer of this question. Then this really huge issue of uh, frontier and how can you access to a different country now. It's a really huge problem. But also water is not just a really beautiful story of water. You have a lot of uh, really hard and rude story of water about slavery and also actually now um, about migrants who, who try to, yes, to cross frontier um, across water. But so for me, it was very important. Um, I always have, I think, this symbol of water in my work because for me, it's a symbol of memories. And um, when you try to keep memories, it's also um, a way to, um, to, inf to infiltrate uh, the frontier that we have in, a, in, a, yes, in, a, in Earth and our, in our real, uh, real world. But I think it's really important to continue to write text and also poetry. For me, it's really a response um, to, to this issue. And also, I know that maybe it's also, it's sure that it's uh, like an utopia. Uh, okay, you have this huge issue and now you're gonna have, you want to, to write poetry, are you, are you sure that this is a good answer? But yeah, I think we need to disconnect to the real world um, and the internet uh, for me is a kind of uh, good answer for that. And it's funny because um, I have a lot of, um, I work a lot um, about my genealogy and the family genealogy. And I discovered a lot of uh, cousins from uh, across the internet. And um, so this is why also I link genealogy and internet and this kind of weird situation that I try to, to create, but this is really important for me. Oh, wow. I mean, it's, I, I totally agree. I mean, it may seem like a futile effort, but I think that it's really important. And, you know, you mentioned science fiction is something that can be used. And I've always looked at science fiction as a way to rethink new kinds of possibilities. And I think that the, the toolkit that that gives us is so profound. Um, I mean, if I mean, I the classic example is thinking about the old show Star Trek and how a lot of our yes. contemporary inventions came from, you know, are directly inspired by, you know, that 
piece of science fiction and the imagination of the of the creators. And so, you know, I think that it's it's a really important effort to just start to to imagine. Um, yes, and as, and as but maybe just for a reference, um, um, a science fiction reference, a precise one. Battlestar Galactica is a really good reference uh, for frontiers. In fact, because you have this spaceship. In, uh, in space constantly moving because they have to um, escape uh, from the enemies. But also there are just a few sample of the rest of humanity that we had on earth and they had to recreate something new from scratch and it's hard. And I think really Battlestar Galactica really talk about frontier and yes, uh, cultural connection and how can you construct something new from nothing and also how can you construct like a new country or maybe maybe just a piece of country when you're constantly moving in space? And for me, it's this, kind, this situation is really important of my rock. This analogy is really uh, uh, strong in my rock. Uh, this analogy of uh, the, the spaceship constantly moving because he doesn't have choice to move, but also he can escape to frontiers because he has to move. Um, so I really love this um, analogy, uh, this analogy from Battlestar Galactica. It was just uh... <laughs> no, that's a great example, um, and I think you know, I think that something that a lot of you know, uh, a theme that runs throughout your work is like in addition to some of this more science fiction, you know, sides are kind of are Afro Afrofuturist um, ideas um, and philosophy um, and imagery as well. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about, you know, how the Afrofuturist movement connects to this work and how it, um, you know, is how you explore it in your practice. Yes, I think I'm at the beginning, I was so interested about Afrofuturism and for me it was okay this is a new movement etc um, I really need to um, to dig in this uh, for, in this reference but um, after um, a few years I think at the at the end of when I was graduating in fact um, I started to use a new word because Afrofuturism for me it was so tight in um, for my just for my mind because I really I really wanted something bigger so um, I started to use the word uh, futurable. So this is the contract, the, um, the mix between future and possible. So future possible, futurable. And I started to use this, um, this, specific, um, this specific world. But Afrofuturism was a huge um, necessity, I think, for me uh, in my work. And this, the, the concept was um, a huge necessity in my work at the beginning uh, of, my, of my school, of, of my art school. So the big reference for me was uh, Sun Ra. And Sun Ra, he is a, a really amazing and weird character um, from uh, Saturn, but in fact, he is a real man. Yes. So I'll turn the recording back on um, and yeah, I'll let you pick up where you left off. I'm sorry, it got cut off. No, no, it's okay. No, in fact, I remember what I was saying. I was talking about um, Sunra. So Sunra, he's a, a jazz man from the, um, the um, 40, 50s and he created this, uh, this huge um, and weird uh, world. Uh, in fact, uh, really um, science fictional world. Um, and also he had his orchestra, but he created really this mythology around him. Like he came from Saturn and also he's not a real human being. Um, and that it's really interesting because Saturn also is the, um, the, the planet of uh, melancholy. And, um, you know, in this, this, uh, at this time for a black man, I think melancholy um, was also a state of mind, but not just melancholy, but um, angry and a lot of different state of mind. And um, it is really interesting because he linked a lot of different uh, references uh, in his work. And the huge one was the reference um, to um, ancient Egypt. And it was huge at this time because, you know, uh, we learned at school that uh, Egyptian and ancient Egyptian were right. But in fact, you have a whole a part of Egyptian, but also a huge nasty of Egyptian who were black. And it was really interesting in this work. And really in the middle of the 20th century, it was a lot. 
And um, after that, you have a lot of um, theoretical paper about Black Egyptian and Black uh, ancient Egypt uh, who came after that. But it was, yes, uh, before and also after. And you have this um, Senegalese Egyptologue and uh, Eastern historian, uh, Cher Antadiop. Uh, he wrote a really huge book about um, Egyptian and the link from um, African continent and sub-Saharan continent. Um, so this is why Sonra is a really huge uh, and important uh, character in my work. And he made this really crazy movie, Space is the Place, but space is the place for African-American uh, on this time because we can't live uh, in, this, uh, in this world and this uh, because we are not allowed to, to live. And you have a part in this movie um, he's like uh, in you in um, in um, in an institution for young people, and so he just speak with them, and he say to them, you know, you don't exist in this world. You are just uh, a fantasy for the society. So you have to come with me. You have to come in my spaceship, and then we will go on Saturn, and then we can have the life we deserve. And it's really interesting in terms of politics and also social. social um, I love somehow, really. We, we can criticize a lot of side of his work, but it's a really uh, important, uh, he's a really important character. Um, I'm sure um, of it. Wow, it's so cool to, I mean, what an amazing inspiration. And it's really cool to hear that, you know, that history of, of, of how that you've developed in, in, in dialogue with those with those stories and those works um, on a completely different topic, you know, something else that is really pervasive throughout your work is a connection to non-human beings and to the biological systems around us as well. Um, you know, this piece particularly uh, features a lot of imagery of kind of speculative ocean creatures um, and 3D images of the ocean itself, which is another, you know, sprawling biological system. Um, I was wondering yeah. if you could, you know, expand on that a little bit and, and tell us, you know, how these ideas of the relationship between, you know, technological networks and human networks and biological networks out, you know, outside of the human network kind of come together uh, in this piece. Yes, I think the biological side uh, of my work um, came really important after my residency um, in the, at the Snow Lab in Ontario. Uh, so this is a huge lab for an astrophysicist, uh, astrophysicist lab um, who makes some research about dark matter and neutrinos. So I was like, okay, the world is in the universe is giant. So we can talk in a really total different way um, than just a human way. And we have to hear different stories. And also we can mix the story, the biological one. And also you can mix the genealogy and of plants and your family, etc. It was really um, interesting uh, for me. And then I, um, I bought this, uh, this microscope. And I started to make new image uh, from microscope. You can see one. This is um, a huge photo montage with the uh, lily pollen from microscope and a lot of bacteria. But also you have a lot of the family archive in the background, a lot of different um, different stuff. And I really love the, um, the molecular and also the cellular uh, scale of uh, this, uh, this story, because you can say a lot um, from biology to society. You can resolve a lot of uh, issue of society um, just watching a biology um, process. Um, when you look at, at um, the subdivision process of a cell, it's really crazy. You have just one cell and this cell become like a uh, hundred and thousand different cells, but just from one. And um, it's really crazy because when you think about um, um, uh, racism issue and this, the, this cell who's one at the beginning and became a lot of different um, cell, but with different information, in fact, you, you think like, okay, it's really crazy that human being can create this kind of um, a crazy thought about um, race and uh, also gender. And we have to put everything in the box. 
But I really have the sensation that in nature, we have so many in, um, in swear to our own issue that we have to watch really carefully about, uh, about that because we can just say that, okay, um, uh, gender is so not an issue because when you see that a flower can be a male and a female for at the same uh, in the same uh, for the same flower and they can create it uh, something and also this is the same for a lot of different animals you know uh, in the abyss and in the sea and the ocean you have a lot of plants between plants and also uh, animals it's real you can put them in a box you can say this is an animal and also this is a plant. And I think really at this level, it's so important for me to, to see that. For me, it resolves a lot of questions um, that we, we have. And for me, it's not a question, but uh, for the society, like um, sometimes I, um, I can't understand the, the question we ask to, um, to people um, from the society. Like uh, you have to be there specifically in this box and uh, for me, it's not okay, but we have a lot of answer, but also in physics, and when I was there, I discovered the, the principle of uh, Eisenberg. It's um, a physics uh, principle uh, in a way you can't calculate the, the position and the speed of a, of a same particle, but at, the, at the, the same time. If you try to calculate the position, you're gonna lose the, the speed. If you try to calculate the speed, you're going to lose the position. So uh, you can't put this particle in a way, uh, in a box, in a precise box, and she's just like blurry for you. So you have to make hypothesis and um, you just have to figure it out how to calculate something that you don't really know. Um, so this is just like prospection and hypothesis. And, uh, and you don't put um, a fixed number of some, uh, on something. It's not okay uh, on, on this way. And mostly for physics, um, it's always like, uh, we have to create a, a new formulation, uh, a new calculator for our math and our physics. So I love this way of, of thinking. <laughs> it's, you know, it's interesting you know, to think about, like, I always think about kind of what are the boundaries that are constricting me at the moment, or what are the things, the forces that are defining my behavior, and um, I see, you know, and physics is one of them, you know, there's a, you know, beyond, like, the, beyond the physical, pro the visible protocols, the laws and the policies, there are so many natural protocols as well that, you know, we, we live with it and that shape everything mm -hmm. um and in the you know another thing that i i think a lot and in that same vein i think a lot about algorithms and their role in defining our behavior in uh giving us a certain kind of experience and shaping how we see the world um and in in uh in the work you show a number of google's image searches um and kind of play with the search algorithm and what um you know comes up for different words different phrases i think most notably you search for the word insurrection um and kind of showing mm -hmm. images of different kinds of protests and resistance um and i was wondering how you know in within all of this like how do algorithms and kind of their impacts affect your practice and what kind of, you know, from these experimentations and looking at image searches, looking at Google satellite images, like how have you, your relationship with the algorithm developed or changed? It's, uh, it's funny because I always work with a, a VPN um, because I need to change my IP address every time because <laughs> if I don't, my research gonna be the same at every time. And it's for this video, it's funny because when I tried, when I was looking for the word uh, insurrection, I really had to plan the research because I knew that if I uh, type the word insurrection in, uh, in Google, for me, it's gonna be like really precise um, picture. And it was not the picture I wanted um, every time. So I was like, okay, this is like shooting a movie, but on your screen. So you have to prepare your research, everything. You have to take to tape the um, to to write the um, the world in the in the good way, and also you have to you need to have the the good speed 
um, the good scrolling speed of your of your page. There is a lot of montage also um, and, and shooting for this um, for this video. We don't really see that because we're like, okay, this is just a, an internet page, etc. But I was looking for this precise image uh, because. In fact, what I didn't say, this is that I wrote the, the text uh, from a painting from uh, of um, A.R. Pink, and the name of the painting uh, is Interaction. So you have this statue um, on the floor, and also the text of the movie talk a lot about how you can change the position and the status of uh, a statue, like a real uh, statue. And then when you put the, the statue on the floor, it transformed uh, himself in, uh, in clay because of, the, um, because of the weather, because of different situation. And then you can put the clay in your hand and make something new. Um, it was, it, this is a, a big part of the, um, of the text um, on, in this movie. But also um, what's funny, because when I, I, I made this uh, Google research, it's uh, the, the Google research of Malende. This is the, the village where my, where my um, father came from uh, in Cameroon. But you know, we don't have picture um, on Google Street of the uh, Google Street uh, picture of this uh, of this village. So I just had the map, but I don't really know this uh, this village. Also, in fact, it it could be it's a kind of a fantasy also in my head. And this is also the genealogy I create myself of this village and all um, and all that stuff. So um, it's funny how um, Google uh, satellite put me in a way. Then, and I was uh, looking for a clue, but this clue was not really clear, but I was like, oh, it's okay. I can create something on this really blurry um, um, research and a blurry clue that now I have to work with. And um, th this is funny because also the, um, the research for the interaction and also the Google satellites um was not that precise but i had it to yes to to make a montage of this um yes wow it's interesting to see all of those different kind of board i mean something that a lot of media theorists and scholars kind of you know um like ponder or uh you know abstract different ideas about the network and i love this piece because it it kind of puts it into practice and gives us something tangible to hold on to of you know what it really feels like to be you know looking through the mesh of the network in front of us um and i think that comes through really strongly uh in the piece um is there anything else that uh you want to tell us about uh tableau ciel based contra terre no, I think um, I told a lot, but um, no, yes, no, but I think really the, the, the funny part is that the Google satellite research of uh, something I don't really know. And what I want to, to say about it, it's I think if I want a picture of this village, I have to go uh, to go there because Google uh, hasn't picture of this village uh, in Cameroon. And this is funny. For me, it's like, OK, there is like um, um, a hole in this, uh, in this space, in this internet space. And um, I'm not sure that I want to, to fill that, that hole. Maybe it has to be empty, and I have to do my own picture. So maybe I have to go there. But for this uh, precise research, uh, Google satellites was not the, the answer, but it in, in the kind of way, it was also an answer because I was like, okay, you, you still have to dig um, uh, on, this, uh, on this way. And um, I, I, I don't know, I think for me, it's really close to the, the colonial legacy issue we had, in fact, because you know we have so many pictures from the colonial time in um, on the African continent, but we don't have access uh, of this picture. And then now we have Google Street and Google Earth, and we still don't have access um, to this part of the world. So this is like a huge um, yes, uh, an emptiness uh, of something. And um, this is I think I'm I'm really working on this this emptiness and then so this is a uh, yes this is what i have to say <laughs> yeah definitely i mean we 
like I think that as I mean the em- like this isn't exactly the same thing, but as part of that emptiness, I mean it just shows the the vast disparity of the digital divide and where networks are and who they represent. Um, yes. You know, and you know the fact that there are these gaps show you know where the where the power is flowing, where the control is coming from. Um, and so yeah, it's really important to remember those gaps and to. Uh, you know, do what we can to try to, to fill them. Um, and yes. uh, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a big challenge. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, Josefa, for being here. Um, thank you. <laughs> you guys can go and check out her work as part of Through the Mesh at Neem through the end of, through January. Um, thanks so much. Thank you.